Alrighty, Mr. Gatekeeper here. Hope everybody's had a good weekend so far. I know I'm uh, busy as busy can be. I'm not losing my mind out here in Northeast Georgia. <laughs> Alrighty. What we have here are two twin single 1446 unregulated AB bias uh, one transistor amplifiers. Okay. And you ask yourself, why in the world does he not have any switches, LEDs, variable on the front? What the heck's going on with this? Okay, I'll explain. These two units are going to be going inside radios. Okay. And I believe they are going to be going inside a DAC, if I remember correctly. And uh, the fella is going to use the power wire as the actual on and off switch for them, which is perfectly fine. These things don't pull a lot of amps. <clears throat> you use your little 20, 30 amp switch or even a 10 amp switch would be fine. Yeah. I'd probably use a 15 up. So anyway, he's going to use the power wires, the actual switch for it. So there they be, uh, single 1446, AB biased, unregulated AB bias. All right, we'll see what each of them are doing one by one. They know two two amps are the exact same. Uh, one is doing just a little bit more than the other. They are twins, even though there are a few things a little different of each. I kind of made each of them unique in their own way still. I don't usually do cookie cut type of building yet, at least. <laughs> So, all right, let's see what these are these are doing one by one. Alrighty, well here she is. Single fourteen forty six. True unregulated A B biased. It's gonna be going inside of a DAC if my memory serves me right. The individual tuned input and individual tuned output. As you can see there. Uh, I tried uh, something a little new than what I've tried before. I won't uh, get deeply into it, but uh, a lot of my AB biased Amps that you've seen me done, a lot of them are A, B, and C switchable. So you'll see me using relays to uh, uh, make this uh, possible. Well, this right here is just going to be straight A, B, no C option. So as you see, I've uh, utilized just one main relay. And uh, using chokes there to uh, get the active biasing going on there so it's really neat man uh, to build a CDC and AC pretty much uh, have a relationship with each other without uh, without having the intermingle <laughs> I won't get uh, deep into it but uh, kind of like a Texas star and also, I believe that uh, X Force B biased uh, B biased amps are the same. If, if 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 don't don't hold me to that. If my memory serves me right, I think the uh, X Force B biased amplifiers uh, I think do this the same approach. But um, if you see down here, you see that choke right there that I'm pointing to. It's going to the hot bus right here. All right, that brings a DC B plus voltage over to the relay. Since there's not an on and off switch on this, okay. You see this choke right here. 
This choke is soldered to the hot coil of the relay and then solders to the leg of the relay that the uh, incoming RF is going to flow through to go to the input section right here. Okay, so you got positive voltage soldering to that, but as you see, it's right before that blue cap. All right, and anybody that's got any kind of electrical knowledge knows that DC voltage cannot flow through a capacitor in series because there's not electromagnetic flux there for it to pass through it in a sense. Okay, and if you see this choke right here, this choke right here is actually soldered to the incoming RF coming from the input coax this chug right here okay and then it flows on through the sandbar resistor onto the uh, AB bias circuit which I had to customize a little bit for this certain situation it seemed like with using these chokes I had to do some readjustment to the biasing circuit because it was a little high it was it was about 0.8 volts on the high end and god it was <laughs> It was showing the difference on the old bird meter there, but uh, that, that's not good. That's not good. You, you don't want too much voltage. Uh, that bias voltage is going to the base of the transistors, man. It will cause you some problems in the long run, possibly the short run. Big chance the short run. So anyway, make a long story short, AC cannot pass through these chokes. Okay, they're not supposed to be able to pass through these chokes. And DC cannot pass through a capacitor in series. So there you go. It's kind of like two uh, guys in the street saying, traffic, you go this way. And, you, you know, you, this line of traffic go that way. So that's how we're utilizing that without having to use an extra relay. Okay, I won't get deeper into that. That might have confused a, a few people. But uh, basically the positive, when I key the amp, when I key the amp, Positive voltage comes from the hot bus over here, which is on the positive coil of the relay through this choke. Okay. You see that cap. Well, that positive voltage cannot flow through that cap. And that cap is soldered to this 316 coax coming to the front. So positive voltage cannot flow through that cap. So the only other way, only other place it has to go is, since I'm keyed, that lead is touching this lead that has this choke on it. So the positive voltage goes to this lead, since it's touching, flows through that uh, choke onto the AB circuit. Okay. The RF, what the RF does is flows from this lead that this choke is on right here, and it's touching this lead over here, the same lead. But the RF flows through that capacitor in series. And then goes on through the coax. So, as you see, we have DC and AC right there at the same place, but they don't see each other. So it's real neat. Works well. Alrighty. I believe that's it. Uh, I think the only thing I ran a little test with was, uh, you see the three 1000s right here. I ran a new little test uh, with the next one you'll see. You'll see just a single small cap on there. Okay. And uh, the test came successfully. That single uh, small cap is actually equal to these three. Okay. We've got some input padding right here. It's, gonna, it's not in series though. It's going to ground. So we've got some input padding for, for the guy. I always like to use input padding with an AB bias amp always. It's just, just my style. <laughs> Alrighty, well, I won't show the other one too deeply since we showed this one. Okay, you got the, uh, whenever I do an AB, uh, straight AB, I like to send the RF through a cap and series to the relay. Uh, this is automatic, uh, side, uh, side band delay. Okay. He did not want any switches on this amp at all. Alrighty, before we key up, let me show you the bias voltage. We got everything hooked up here. So I'm just going to be taking this straight to the base of the transistor. Okay. 
Okay, I have it set where you can turn this up to 15.3 volts safely. Okay, once you go beyond that, you start getting into the red line and you're on your own at that point. Okay, that's the way I got this particular one set up. Alrighty, so I'm going to take this the uh, ch choke bringing the uh, bias voltage to the base of the transistor. Go ahead and put that right there. Okay, I'm going to see if I can maneuver this. There goes the phone ringing. Alright, here we go, I'm going to keep. There you go, 0 .7, 0 8, 0 0.7 volts right there on the money, okay? Now as you see, like I said, this is non-regulated. I'm going to turn I'm going to turn it down to about 14.5 and let you check this out. Okay. And now we're a lot safer. 0 0.67, 0 0.68. Okay. I would like to run this around 14 to 14.5 is a great spot for it. Of course, you know, 13.8, whatever, fine. Like I said, I got to where it goes about 15.3 volts. You're right there at about a dead even 0.7. That transistor is all the way on. Okay. That transistor is all the way on. After that, you're in a red zone. You're on your own at that point. And I don't recommend running it past that at all. I'm, I'm working on some regulated AB circuits I'm playing around with. I just didn't get a lot of time because I'm so busy. So, so busy. I want to apologize to everybody that's waiting to. I'm uh, about a month and a half, a little bit longer past my estimated time. And I've told everybody I really apologize for that, y'all. It's just... You know, I've just got a lot of people uh, calling me and, uh, you know, just doing all I can over here. So I'm a one-man show. So y'all just bear with me. I'm doing my best. All right, so we're going to go ahead and see what this puppy's doing on the bird meter. Right, right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and unhook the uh, voltmeter here and we'll put that over there. All righty. We are just running the uh, the, the bench radio. We, we're, I'm not even going to hook up a hot radio today. We're just going to be running. Th this guy is actually going to be running about half of what I'm putting into this. He's going to be running about 10 watts peep, about uh, a two bird Man, maybe at the most. Glad. Okay. So I will show you real quick. Let me turn the amp off, uh, power off. Power supply. Man. Okay. What about that? <laughs> Red. Okay, that's a 10 watt slug. Red. Oh, yeah. wow. Almost four bird watts. Okay, that's what we're going to be driving to the ant. That's not loud, man. Okay. Let's turn the power back on. Alrighty, I'm going to turn this down to about an even 13.8. Okay, and let you see what that's doing bird watch wise. We do have a PEP meter man. up. This PEP <laughs> meter is uh, man, man. is a very accurate, but it's still man, just uh, reference. Man. It's pure reference. We're on a hundred watt you scale, so we're looking at this bottom portion right oh, here. Okay. Up. All right. Don't worry about it. All right. It's Madonna calling. hundred watt she's slug. Call her back. All right. I know. They probably say, man, you There's your 10 that. watt hey, dead key. You thought, you thought oh. It's so about 25 here. bird. Something like that. Looking at your peak over here. Oh. Yeah, That's about yeah. 90 peak. Input tune. Slug, uh, slug and reverse. Oh. Beautiful input tune. Oh. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go over here and just crank up this to a 15.3, which is that uh, okay. max point. Okay. 
We should be getting close to 30 bird. Right. Maybe a little more. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's right there, about that 30 birds. Sorry there, about the flash. Go. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. Getting a lot, a little bit more out of the other one, you'll see. Right, this right here should slam the 100 watt scale. Go. Oh, yeah. There you go. So I feel like Good, yeah. Input tune's beautiful. Beautiful working ant man. Got this thing sewed up from the front to the back. We'll go ahead and get that top on there. Got a real fast spinning fan here for him. The reason I did that, I know he's going to have this inside of a radio. So I knew the sound will be dampened a little bit since it's going to be inside that big case, that radio there. So this thing's going to be blowing some good air. Very important to keep an unregulated AB box cool very very important you don't want thermal yeah. runaway coming in effect that's that's not fun not fun at all all right. righty well let's right. go to the next one all righty here's the second one second twin a b biased single 1446 all righty fairly much the same like i said about the only thing i was running a little test with was uh as you see this one simple small little ceramic cap here a kilovolt cap man that thing's equal the same as the last three i just kind of wanted to do that to show you know that you know it doesn't alter the performance and uh this thing uh, generates no heat as well so you know believe it or not man whenever you see a lot of people using three silver dip micas you know makes you think you know it could be uh, saving a little bit of money there's really no use for it but hey I ain't going to say much to it because I'm an overkill type of guy myself. So I do a lot of overkilling as well. Uh, also, we got a 1,000 on this output. There's 820 on the other one. Didn't make that much of a difference. Yeah. Just want to run a little thing there. You'll see different little uh, things and different designs. These 1446 designs here. The uh, tune on both of them were fairly close. I believe the uh, input was a little different from each of them, but the uh, output was fairly close. I can't even remember what it was now, but like I said before, we had everything. I had a trimmer on the input, trimmer on the output, tuned them both in. A lot of times when I do that, you'll see me have to use two caps to equal that exact number. Because like I said, if it equals 93 picofarad, most people will just round up the 95 or 90. I'm just, I'm just crazy, man. I'm OCD. If it equals 93, I'll make it 93. <laughs> and that's why you'll see me using two caps. M majority of the time, there will be about two caps like that when I'm doing a, a individual tune right there. And there's a couple amps I do build that I'm, I already pretty much know the tune. You'll see a single cap. Like if it's a, a simple Class C 21446 box or something like that. All right. I'll show you the bias voltage first. your point six nine alrighty increase the voltage a little bit there and about thirteen eight and then we'll go ahead and do we'll go ahead and do fifteen Point set. That's about point seven four. It's a little bit hotter than the last one. Put that joker down about. So that's a little bit hotter than last. Uh, could do some readjustment, but it'll be fine. Also, uh, uh, I believe he, he's going to be running on an unregulated. He's going to be running on a regulated supply that's going to be regulated down around fourteen volts, I believe, for that DAC. So uh, that's going to put this right at there at the perfect, like right, 0.69, maybe 0.7 right on the money. So that'll be all good. All righty. All right, let's go ahead and show you the output. 
We'll start off like we did last time, about 13.8. Same as last one, about 25 bird. I think this one's hitting a little bit more PP though, if I remember correctly. Oh, yeah, see, it's off the scale, so this one's a little bit higher on the peak. 10 watt slug in reverse. Oh, doesn't even move. Beautiful tune. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Alrighty. Really quick. I need to hurry up and get on this Valentine's Day, man. Get, get, get something for the sweet thing on this cat picking in. All right, underwatt slug. Oh, so that's about 35, eh, about 33, I guess, bird. Oh, a little bit past the 30 mark. Of course. Oh, yeah. I'll let you see. This one's getting close to about 150 peak on this meter. I flipped it to the thousand, so we're reading the top scale. Okay. Well, we're reading the first black scale, the bottom. Oh, yeah. It's right here, 150 watts. As I said, this is for reference, but it's still very accurate. So. That's uh, that's really good, man. These are performing very nice. As you see, there's a fan back there. And uh, I got to go ahead and get on out of here, man. And uh, gotta, these these fans are very fast. <laughs> so I got a 10, 10 ohm uh, resistor on there to kind of help slow them down, which don't do a lot of justice. All right, well, there you go. Mr. Gatekeeper said it. We got many more to do. God bless. 73rds. We're good and gone.